everyone. Hi, this is Monica from Huckleberry Mountain Botanical School of Herbalism, and I'm here with Lindy. Lindy. I just realized we finally figured out our beginning. Yeah. Although I repeat your name, I don't know why I do that. Oh, I, don't, I never noticed. <laughs> Hi, Sean. All right, so today we are going to talk a little bit about yarrow. Um, you likely have this growing out near you somewhere, maybe in your yard, maybe in your garden. Um, it's it's quite distinctive to me, and it's doesn't it's not that hard to identify. So. The one thing though that I am going to warn you about a little bit is that the leaves can vary quite a bit depending on where they're growing. And I'm gonna show you that here if you can see. I have one that was growing in my garden, one that was growing near our food forest and one that was up in our food forest. And it's amazing what a difference depending on how the soil is, how the moisture is, basically how babied it's been. So this is the leaf that was growing in um, my garden. It's nice and full and a pretty dark green. The, um, the botanical name for yarrow is, do you remember it? Achillea millifolium. Yes, millifolium means million leaves or many, many leaves. So this one was growing right outside our food forest. So if you look, you can see that it's not quite as thick and plush, it's a little bigger. And then this one was growing in the food forest. You can't even hardly see the little tiny leaves in there. It's, it's kind of anemic. However, that also means that um, it had a rough life and it's got some strong medicine. The aromatics are usually greater in ones like that than ones that have an easier growing um, area. That is such an interesting analogy of life. Yeah. When you have things tough. Right. So like if you harvest herbs from a place where they've been babied and just like everything given to them, essentially, they're very, very weak medicine. Usually they're bigger. They'll most of the time, you know, they'll look more important. Wow, this is so this is so true. <laughs> well, except these are the leaves that were really babied in my garden. But, oh, well, you're ruining my Oh, nails. sorry. So, yeah, but it's true. We see that even with our nettles, the, the stuff that grows inside our garden is actually tougher. Is actually, it's tougher. It is tougher because it's not the place where I wanted to grow. It's drier. We're it's, not hearing. He said we're not hearing. I'm going to hear a song now. All right, can you hear us now? Is this better? Test to let us know. Sorry. I can hear it. Okay, weird. Anyway, so uh, yeah, the, the plants that have a harder life that really have to work. grow and work and, I don't know, just work for it are so much stronger. They're better medicine. They will have a stronger flavor, a stronger smell. Yeah, it's incredible. Wow, this has like. I know smell. Some, of them, some of them don't have much smell at all. Okay, so let's talk anyway. a little bit about the identification you're going to have that that generally this leaf. And what's cool is you have this stem. It'll have some basal leaves at the bottom that are quite, you know, furry like that. Basal meaning that's the the grow at the base growth of. Yeah, they grow at the base like that, not like basil, like the herb. Yeah, not basil, like herb. Yeah. And then on the way up the stem, you'll see these leaves, and they usually get smaller and smaller as they get near the top. Oh, the volume is on his end. Okay. All right. <laughs> then they have this umble top here. So what, do you remember what family this is from? This is not oh, true umbles. It's not the Composite. No. Oh, it's not the composite family. No, it's actually the Aster. No. Hey, Dad, what? It's the Asteraceae family. Oh, it's the Aster family. Yeah. But they've got little tiny flowers within every single one of these. So what's cool, I'm going to show you, I picked several different shades here. Look at all those different shades of yarrow. Now, from what everything that I've read and 
that the white has the strongest medicine. There are yellow out there as well. I don't have any yellow growing on our property anywhere. We have white, we have light pink, we have like a fuchsia, we even go to a dark crimson. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have a lot of different colors, but we do yeah. not have yellow. But um, these are awesome to even dry and use in floral arrangements, whether it's in a vase arrangement or in a wreath or like a floral swag or something like that. I don't know if it's just this, but it smells like honey. Oh. oh, it does kind of. It's been sitting in my garden. Ooh, that made me itchy. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked a little bit about identification. You're gonna be looking for those kind of furry leaves and the leaves that are gonna be going up the stem, um, the flowers that are set in, and if you look closely at each one, so you can see you'll all have these to, individual flowers. Yeah, you'll have to get your own plant to inspect. Yeah, but. so uses, we can, let's start with the root. The root is usable um, chewing if you actually have um, toothaches. It's perfectly fine just taking it out of the ground, wash it off a little bit, and chew it. The leaves and the flowers have traditionally been used for taking down fever and for helping fight off cold and flu. Another really awesome use that I just used it for a couple days ago was as a wet. Uh, it's to stop bleeding. What's the word? Styptic. Styptic. Yes. I cut my finger fairly bad, and I used yarrow to stop the bleeding, and then I put self-heal to keep the bleeding from starting up again and soothe and heal my finger a little bit. It really did help because I was in a lot of pain that day. The other thing that it's useful for because it is astringent is for helping to stop um, excessive menstrual bleeding. So it's really helpful for that and um, it's a bitter. And what are bitters good for? The liver and digestive system. Yeah, so and it helps cooling. to start the digestive process it increases bile and bile helps to break down fats. So if you can take some bitters before, which means sometimes, hi Robin, sometimes you can just take the leaves and either chew it or put it in a salad, throw it into some pasta, get that little bit of bitterness to try and help the digestive system start moving. It, it signals the brain to get things going through the body. And then if you can get the bile improved, then you can your breakdown of fats are better and the absorption is better and everything um, is drawn in and pulled through and gets out of your body a lot easier. So those are just some basic uses of yarrow. And like I said, I bet you that you've got it growing near you or um, in your yard or somebody else's garden. Hi, Kana. That don't want it growing there. There's a lot of people that think of it as sort of a, a weed. A weed. Invasive. Yeah, <laughs> it likes to grow and it, it's it a really wonderful plant. So I think that's all I have to say about yarrow. What, um, do this, if you're gonna go out and pick it, um, get some of the basil leaves as well, but the easiest way to dry yarrow is by hanging it Hi, up. Hi, Shamra. Hi, Shamra. Just hang it up and Lindy gave these instructions the other day, but I'm just gonna go over them again. I, would pro I could probably even do a few more than that Put a rubber band around it and hang it up in a place where it's out of direct sunlight, but it still has airflow. And once it's dried, then go through, take the flowers off, remove the leaves, and then you'll have that set aside for later. It is a lot easier to do it that way. <laughs> Kana, you're always late. Um, a lot easier to do it that way than it is to pull the leaves off and the flowers off and trying to dry them flat on screens. It saves you so much time so much effort and honestly the easiest way to do this is like if i drag lindy out and we go pick and then we sit down and just start rubber banding things mm -hmm. together and just hang them up and you know make it look a little herby all over our house and and plus it's beautiful and one of the things i yeah. like to do with yarrow when i when we get near the end of the season is go out and pick some make a bunch and put twine around it after they're dry, and then just use it as um, decoration to hang around different places in my house. Because yeah. yarrow is just beautiful and it, it preserves beautiful. so, so well. So definitely do that. You know, look at, try and think of ways that you can get herbalism into your life and it doesn't necessarily have to be into your body. You can be gardening, you can be um, using it to decorate your home, you can be taking it as a tea. And this is really great if the kids have a fever, using it in a bath. 
um, creating a nice uh, bag with yarrow leaves and flowers and putting that into a bath to try and help. How, do, how does it fever. help? How does it help? It's a diaphoretic. It's a diaphoretic. It makes you sweat. So it takes the fever from inside of you and releases it out. Yes, exactly. Yarrow is a wonderful plant with a lot of different uses. So I would highly suggest getting out and either growing it. Super simple. If you have an area in your garden that you go, nothing can grow here. You don't have access to water very well over there. Yarrow will that's, grow there. That's the spot Yarrow wants to grow. Yeah. Grow it there, put it there, and once it gets going, you won't have to worry about it again. It'll spread, it'll grow, and it'll come back year after year. All right. So if you have any questions about yarrow, let us know. And if you um, are growing some or you get some, post pictures. We always love to see what people are doing. Okay, we will be back tomorrow. I'm going to be doing a lavender lemonade. Um, that it's it's a kind of a syrup. Yeah, syrup that you can add to sparkling water or to an alcoholic beverage, whichever you prefer. Because you know this is my Thursday. Tomorrow will be Thursday, which is my Friday, because that's my last um, time that I'll be um, doing anything this week. Also, I want to send out a happy birthday to my niece. Um, it is her birthday today. She's 20, so happy birthday if you see this. And if not, I'll be calling you in a little bit. <laughs> and also, don't miss our live event. Um, where we'll be giving, be doing giveaways and freebies and all of that on July 28th here. You can meet us online. Um, we have the event posted. Go in there. Tell us you're coming. And um, you're welcome, Robin. Thanks for coming. And hi, get Andrea. over there. Oh, hi, Andrea. Um, get over there. Sign up and let us know that um, that you're coming. And because we, we want to find out kind of who all's coming and really get the right gifts and stuff. If, if you're, well, if you're a regular, you'll get better stuff. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Shamra. These are going to be just drawings. Just We're going to be drawings. treated like royalty, Shamra. <laughs> okay. Well, we will see you tomorrow. Until then, health and joy. Bye.